Welcome to Living Well with Ellen Davey, and I'm Rob Holding. Ellen, welcome back. Lovely to be back, Rob. We want to live well, and and this time we want to look at, uh, I suppose, God's intention for us, getting back to that image, back yeah. to the garden, is it? Yeah, well, it, it, it almost is back to the garden. It's, it's interesting, you know, that I think there are 1,196 chapters in the Bible. Right. You could check that out, but I think it's something like that. There's only four chapters in the Bible that aren't affected by sin. Seriously? Only four chapters in the Bible that are not affected by sin. And it's, and it's Genesis 1 and 2 would be two of those. And Revelation 23, 24. Of only, course. Only, yep. only, yeah, I, no, that's that. Yep, okay. Yeah. So there's yeah. only two chapters. So, so the, the story began in a garden. Beautiful. Yep. It ends in somewhere beautiful. In between is God's longing to restore us. Yep. He's longing to restore us. And for all sorts of reasons, some of us can see God in a view that I think is, is um, not helpful or profound. Our view of God. Sorry, our view of God. Yep. Yeah. My granddaughter was at, was at our place yesterday. She's one and a bit years old, one and a half maybe. And she's sitting in her high chair with her sippy cup. And it's amazing how much water a sippy cup can yeah. dispense. <laughs> and so, so she, uh, someone got her out of the high chair, put her down on the ground, and she started running along. But unfortunately, the water from the sippy cup she slipped on it, and she hit the ground really hard. It was a thud that you you hate hearing yep. that kind of thud, and uh, and she was just uh, she was beside herself. And so someone picked her up, and I was standing, um, you know, a couple of meters away, looking at what was going on. And she looks at me, and she reaches out like that to me, which yep. is beautiful. And so I grab hold of her. She's bawling her eyes out. She nestles in to 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 the the crook of my neck, still crying terribly. Yep. and. Every part of my being, I just wrapped my arms around her, and every part of my being wanted to absorb the pain and the suffering, wanted to take that from her. Yeah. Well, I say that's a picture of God. That's a good picture of God. And he longs to do that, and he still longs to do that. It's not just he longed to do that on the cross. He longs to do that now. Well, that was the point of the cross. To allow that. To allow that. Yeah. That, that, that was the expression, his ultimate expression of yeah. wanting to do that. Yeah. It absolutely was, and that expression is still there today. You know, the Holy Spirit is is God with us today, yeah. desiring for us to be restored, seeking for us to have that wonderful freedom, that that unity with 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 God. I think a lot of us want. Um, if you use Johnny Erickson Tata as an example, and and you know she's been a tetraplegic now for over fifty years, and she says I'm looking for. She said obviously God's not going to heal me on this earth, mm. so she's looking forward to being able to dance and 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 play before the Lord, uh, in that future period at, at at the other end, the last two chapters of Revelation. Yeah. Um, and so often we we are prepared to wait for that. Yeah. With what's going on in our yeah, lives, yeah. right? We know that in the end, uh, Steve Camp sings it. I think you know, in the end, I will be restored and all of that. But for now, he covers me, and I think we're prepared to put up with what's going on in our lives, the bad stuff, the if physical or, or, or psychological or whatever or emotional, mm. because we know in the future. But God's standing there at the moment, saying. I want to wrap my arms around you now. It's absolutely right. It's all yours yeah. now. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I'll give you rest. You come to me. In Genesis 3, where, where it all hit the fan, Adam and Eve, they ate from the tree like they weren't meant to. And then God turns up on the scene, and uh, Genesis 3.10, I think it is, and, and uh, so he's walking in the garden, and he calls out to Adam, where are you? And Adam's response to God while he's hiding is, I, I heard you in the garden, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And so, so afraid, fear entered the garden. Yep. Naked, shame entered the garden, hid, guilt entered the garden. And I think we've talked about that. And, and we are seeded from Adam and Eve. We come from God. Yes. So, so we're from God, but through Adam and Eve. And so that, that seed that we carry, the, 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 the taint from Adam and Eve, affects us and infects us. 
but we're meant to be free from that because if Adam had owned his stuff and had said, my bad to God, then I think things could have been different. I mean, we don't know, but I think things would have been different. But he, he didn't. He passed the black back, didn't he? I mean, he said, <laughs> the woman you gave yeah. me. So so he actually ended up blaming God. God yeah. And so God God's hands were tied then, and so he provided another sacrifice to, to, to clothe them at that moment. The, the whole quest of our life, Rob, is to regain the original image we were created in. Yeah. Not the one that 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 we've gathered about ourselves from from womb to whatever age we are, but the one that we were originally meant to have. You know, which is those first two chapters. Yep. Yep. And those last two chapters. You know, the first two of Genesis, the last two of Revelation. That's the image, and 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 I personally believe that image is the quest of our life today is to regain the original image we were created in. Jesus said, it's, I, I haven't come to call righteous people, but sinners. I haven't come uh, for the healthy, but the sick. And what he's really meaning there is that's all of us. Your granddaughter reached out to you because she knew she was in pain yeah. and she wanted that one person that would love her unconditionally that could not necessarily immediately take away the pain, but she recognised that. Yeah, the comfort was available and yeah. she reached out yeah. for that. Well, that comfort is available to all of us. I think, you know, when you're talking about Adam and Eve, uh, and a verse that just came out, I was reading in Jeremiah the other day, and it reminded me, this verse just reminded me of 1 John 1 verse 9, which says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. And in Jeremiah, I think it's uh, 3.12 or something, but God's going, just confess your sin to me, just you know, and, and this is this is why God called David a man after his own heart. You know, when, when Saul was confronted with his sin, he blamed it on on this person and on that lot. And when Adam did it, and and David goes, "Yeah, that was me." Mm. And God's going, oh, an honest person. Uh, if we just admit that we are sinners and we need God's help, and allow Him allow His yeah. shoulder to, to comfort yeah. us and help us. Yeah, that's good. That's right. Because 1 John 1, 7, which is one of my favorite verses, says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll yep. have fellowship with each other. And and we don't do that because we're hiding. We're still hiding behind yep. the tree in the garden. Yeah. That's the imagery I have. I'm still hiding behind the tree because I have guilt, shame, and, and fear, and, I, and, and I'm not trusting God to provide for my need. But I should. That's the whole thing. When, when when the Israelites are traveling through the wilderness, it's God saying, "Trust me, yeah, trust me." And and again in Jeremiah, he doesn't. He says, he says, I, "When I called you out of Egypt, I didn't tell you to do this sacrifice." And that's I said, "Obey me, trust me, trust that." You know, I'm, I'm hiding behind something because if I come out into the light, God, you're going to see that I have sin on me. Mm. And God says, "Yes, yeah. if you come out into the light and confess the sin." I'll remove the sin and you'll no longer have the sin on you and you'll be able to stand in the light. Yes, but I've got sin on me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Is, is, it this, is it this lack of trusting that God is the loving father? Well, and, and again, I mean, we've talked about that before, yeah. with the whole father image. Yeah, I think it is. I think Jesus came for two reasons, in my view. The main primary reason is he came to pay the price for my sin. Yes. He died on the cross to reconcile me to God. The other reason he came was to point to the Father, to point to God, the Father. Yeah. Not God as an almighty, distant, all-powerful being, but uh, this is how you pray, our Father who is in heaven. Yeah. So he came to point to the Father, like, like my granddaughter knew that I was safe. She saw me, the person that was holding her, she wanted me for whatever reason, so she reached out to me. Yeah. That's what we need to be doing. What do your grandkids call you? Pop. Pop. They don't call you grandfather. No, no, exactly. They call no, you pop. I have a relationship. Je Jesus with did them. not come to show us father. Mm. He came to show us Abba Father. Yeah. As I understand it, that when Jesus said, "This is how you pray," when He said, "Our Father in heaven," it is the word Abba. Now I may be wrong with that, but that's yeah, I'm not how sure it, on that. But that, but that's that, that's but the that, thing. It's 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 an intimate relationship. It's yeah. it's not a. And people get this wrong. It's it's not daddy. Abba doesn't mean daddy, but it's a. Um, actually, I wrote this in an article recently, years ago. My my dad ran a youth group, and all the kids got to call him Dave, except us. Of course, we had to call him Dad. Yeah, and we were so jealous. 
you know, well, how come all the other kids get to call you Dave? And, you know, we, years and years later, because of who my father was, I realised that most of those kids would probably have loved to be able to call my dad right. dad. Yeah. You know, and that's what Jesus is saying. He says, it's, I, I know, yes, God is God, but I want you to know him as father, as Abba father. I want to bring you into this relationship with him. But again, that whole sin thing gets in the way of restoring that image, that, that relationship. Yeah, I think the question God asks us every day is, will you trust me? Like yeah. every day. It's the question I wake up with every day is, will, 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 I, will I trust you like I should today, God? <laughs> So every day it's like, okay, and I need to orientate myself to that. I need to orientate myself to who he truly is, what he has available, what he's done, what he wants for my life, in my life, through my life. I was thinking while I was driving here, actually, um, I could have started this by saying, well, let, let, let's talk about the meaning of life. Yep. And, 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 and that's the big picture is the meaning of life. And in John seventeen three, I think it is. Jesus said, "This is eternal life. This is the meaning of life: to know me, the only uh, to know." Oh, he's praying to the Father. That's right. To know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, who you've sent. Yeah. To know, to know that that intimate understanding, yeah. that that realization that, oh yes, I've stuffed up. Oh, but you're still here with me. Yeah, let's go fix this together. I'm yeah. still here with you, rather than condemnation. It might be. Um, it'll be. Correction, for sure, but God doesn't condemn. No. And again, see, that goes back to the whole image we have of the Father of God. Um, if, you, um, if you're a sports person or a whatever or a musician and you have a tutor or a, a trainer, you are expecting to be corrected by that person. Mm. If you're doing something wrong, you're expecting and hoping that they will correct you. You're not, you're not cringing or you shouldn't be cringing uh, unless you're like a nine-year-old kid and Beethoven was your piano teacher because you know? <laughs> he was pretty tough. But you know, you're, you're hoping that this person will help you to get better at what it is mm. that you're wanting to do. Mm. And that's the image we need to see on God is for the correction. But I need to, be, I need to admit my fault to him. Yeah. I need to admit that I need correcting. Yeah, we do, and that's the hard part. Is is because we don't want to we don't want to confess that I'm not perfect already. I'd rather hide that fact. You know, that's why I wear loose shirts to try and hide the fact that I'm slightly larger than most people. What I say to often say to my clients, I say we're all broken. Not just you and me. It's not just you and me in this room, or if I'm talking to you. It's yeah. not just you and me, Rob, because you know you're broken. I know I'm broken. So it's not just you and me that are broken. No, we're all broken. Yeah. So when we can start from that perspective and realize, this, and, and realize that wherever there is pain, there is healing to be had. Wherever there is pain in my life, yeah. there is healing to be had. It's like if you fall over and break your arm, the pain senses in our body indicate something that's not right, yeah. something that needs healing. And so we go and get the correct um, diagnosis and then, and then follow through with um, the correct application, yeah. then that healing is to be found. But what hurts more, a broken arm or a broken heart? We all know the answer to that. You know, our, the, deep, the deep emotional wounds that we all have they are the profound wounds of our being, yeah. but we don't know how to deal with them. And so instead of trying to deal with the, the emotional wound because we're hurting, hurt means there's healing to be found, we just think, well, that hurts too much to cope with, so I'll shut it down, I'll hide it away, I'll drink it down, I'll, I'll distract myself doing yeah. this and that. But the problem is it hasn't gone away. In fact, it goes deeper. And it starts oozing out in all sorts of places. And as we get older, as we've often said, I think, when the river runs low, the rocks show. Yeah. And as we get older, it's like, well, this, you know, I've tried, I've tried to avoid facing this. I've tried to deal with this by distraction and, 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 and other things, but that doesn't work. Yeah, the, 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 the life of alcohol, sex, drugs and all that sort of stuff, it's not too, um, it, it's not too, enhance your enjoyment of life it's to decrease the pain of life I don't, I don't take drugs i mean do drugs make you feel better when you're high obviously they do otherwise people wouldn't take them but you don't you don't do drugs 
just to feel um, better as such, you do drugs to stop feeling worse. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, and that's and that's the wrong doctor to go to. Yeah, sin always under delivers. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, see, see, sin is just sin isn't. Oh, you're a disgusting person. That's not what sin is. Sin is just anything God doesn't agree with, and He doesn't agree with it because He knows it's not good for us. Yeah. And so His desire, He calls it sin, because He wants us to be able to confront what's not working, what's broken, because it's fixable. Yeah. And when we can recognize it's fixable, then we can hopefully find the right support to deal with what's, what, the pro, what the original problem is. Because wherever the, the root cause of the issue is the issue. As I've, as I've often also said, you know, our behavior comes from our beliefs. Yep. And so we need to recognize, okay, that behavior is not standalone, it's coming from somewhere. And let's go down and find out where that somewhere is so we can apply the healing that's needed for that situation. It's interesting. I was watching a, a, a little documentary on Tom Baker uh, last night, Doctor Who. You remember? Oh, yeah. You know, the, the, the scarf and... Oh, yeah. 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 Um, and he was, uh, when he was younger, he was a very, very quiet person and he was told by everybody that he was a nothing uh, and eventually, I mean, he, he, he actually um, became a monk for several years uh, in his late teens into his early 20s, but put that aside, realized that the faith wasn't his thing. And before he became the doctor, he was actually digging roads. He put his application in for it. But then he became Doctor Who and he became the icon of the BBC and he was famous everywhere. You know, everywhere he went, he was in Doctor Who regalia with the scarf and with right. the hat and everything. Um, and eventually became this absolutely arrogant piece of, you know, <laughs> a complete change mm. from what he had been. Uh, and, and to me, as I'm watching it and listening to it, I'm thinking this is this is a this is the wrong reaction. So what he was getting was the wrong words when he was younger. You're a nothing. You'll never amount, amount to anything. And now he's amounted to something, and and pride is puffed up and everything, and it's gone the wrong way. But the, again, that's the whole thing. Is you, you haven't got the right coach to help you transition from Absolutely. the stinking thinking or whatever the term is, um, and we go to the drugs or we go to uh, wherever our friends or um, med, you know, Eastern meditation or whatever to fix the problem, we're going to the wrong doctor. Yeah. The, um, the Sermon on the Mount, I'm, I'm just, just finished reading it actually, it's uh, Matthew 5 and finishes at, Matthew, at the end of Matthew 7. And it's just profound. It's it's the greatest sermon ever spoken. You know, that's yeah. it's known for that. And it's deep and it's profound. In Matthew seven, verse twelve, Jesus so so he's given this this profound information as to how we should be living. Yeah. And you go, Oh, I can't achieve that. It's a pursuit. It's 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 yeah. a worthy pursuit to live your life by. But flip, that's hard. And then he says, "Do unto others as you would do unto." The, the, this is he basically says, yeah. "This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you." Yeah. This is and 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 this sums up the law and the prophets. That's how he finishes it. And I thought about that, and I thought that's actually profound. Yeah. Because how do I want people to treat me? You know, when I'm um, do I want people to be angry with me or at me? Okay, not really, not not in a, in a violent way. Well, don't be like that to others that are close to you. Do I want people to listen to me? Well, become a good listener, Alan. Do I want people to uh, to to um, to to be kind and respectful to me? Yeah, I do. Well, you be kind and respectful to others, Alan. And it's kind of, it, for me, it just turned that around and it was yeah. like, oh, I've still got some work to do. But we all do, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. We all have work to do. But like you said, if we don't have a point of reference, which we as Christians do, and I'm just so grateful to God for that, you know, that Christ is our point of reference. Yeah. And how did he live his life? Um, what was he portraying in his life 
because my life is broken, his life isn't. And so I want to, I like the word represent, to represent what it is, to represent Christ Christ on this planet, I think, is one of the greatest causes yeah. of our life. Um, well, I think that's, to me, I think that's the only reason we're still here as Christians. You know, I say to people a lot, you know, what is heaven better than earth? Yes. So if God wanted the best for Alan Davey, the moment you came to know him, he'd kill you, you'd go straight right. to heaven. Yeah. So second question, when you came to know the Lord, did he kill you? No, right. No. So you're not here for your benefit. Mm. We are here to represent mm. Christ mm. to the world. Mm. Uh, and you know, I said to somebody the other day that um, that the, the world, uh, uh, they know that we're believers and they're looking at us. They're not looking as much to see us being perfect. They're looking to see our reaction to imperfect. How do, how do you yeah. react to what's going yeah. on? We can't see that they're looking, and they will lie and tell us that they're not looking at us for that reason, but they are. Mm. Because everybody is looking. God placed the knowledge of him and the hope of him deep inside everyone. Mm. Romans 1 says that. Mm. There was a pastor in Auckland. He was a Baptist pastor, I think, in Sandringham. But they ran a cafe uh, up on K Road as part of the, the – from the Baptist church, the Baptist tabernacle. And his girlfriend – slash fiance lived upstairs above the cafe. Yeah. And so they would run this cafe for the street people, the pimps and the and the prostitutes and everything. And then they'd lock up the door. Uh, she would you know, go next door. He'd give her a kiss goodnight. She'd go upstairs to his flat. To her flat. He'd go around the corner to the Baptist tab, jump in the car and drive back to Papakura or wherever. So one night the car won't start. The battery's gone flat. Right. This is before cell phones. So he hikes back around the corner, bangs on the door. All right, goes upstairs, rings a mate, says the car's gone flat, right? comes back downstairs, you know, mate comes in half an hour sort of thing, goes back downstairs a while later. Next night they're met with a delegation of street people at the cafe. Why did you let us down? And he goes, what do you mean? Well, we saw you go in and spend the night with your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. They were watching. They had, you know, in the cafe, they were thinking, what are we doing here? We're having absolutely no effect on these people. Mm. But they were watching. Uh, and, and they're not watching for us. I mean, in that instance, they're watching for holiness and, 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 and righteousness. But they're, they're not looking at us going, Rob, Alan, you need to be perfect and have absolutely no problems. They want to know the, our, our reaction to those problems that I do have. Yeah. Yeah, keeping it real, isn't it? Yeah. One of the questions that I often use in certain situations is um, if there was a, if there was a loving God would you want him to find you I'll say that to somebody that's an interesting question if there was a loving God so I'm talking are oh, you talking to somebody who's reflecting not a, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, a, a non-christian yeah. person yeah. if there was a loving God would you want him to find you most answer yes because who wouldn't want that but there are a few that have said to me no and when I've questioned them uh, one guy I'm thinking of in particular, he said, no, I'm not deserving of that. And I said, well, you're the very person that he's come for. Yeah. None of us are. And I go to Wake Area Prison, I used to, before lockdown started and half the prison got burnt down before that, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and, and I often have inmates come to me at the end of a session and... Uh, They'll share their heart very, very briefly because yeah. they're being ushered out by the guards, and and they'll talk about stuff they've done and how 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 surely they can't be forgiven for that. And I reassure them that that's exactly what God does. He loves you enough to want to reach you wherever you are, and that's where He reached me, and maybe that's where He reached you, and that's yeah. that's exactly what He wants to do for all of us is to reach us at our point of need. And then to bring comfort and healing and reassurance. I said to the inmates um, once, I, I took advantage of the opportunity. Actually, it was a cold day and the guard couldn't get the heater going in the, uh, in the hall that we were having our meeting in. And um, I said to the inmates as they were walking in, going like this, get the effing heater going was what they were saying and it was never going to go. The guard was making a, a valiant attempt because he had to be trying to do something. He's got to do something. And um, and I said to the inmates, imagine the heater was going, how would you be feeling? And they said, well, we'd be feeling warm, wouldn't we? 
I said, okay. So, so now the heat is going, so this room's now warm, so use your imagination, but you're on the other side of the door there. How are you feeling? We're cold. I said, so what do you need to do to get warm? And so they had some very creative ideas, ideas I hadn't considered, <laughs> but one of them came up with the idea of opening the door, which was the idea I was thinking yep. of. And so, um, so you open the door and you walk into where the warmth is. And I said, okay, whose job is it? Is it the heater's job to come out and find you out there? Or is it your job to open the door to come into where the warmth is? Yeah. And, and they said, no, of course it's our job to come into where the warmth is. And so then I took it a little further and I said, who here wants love, joy and peace? And all of them, these are big tough guys, yeah. all of them said, of course we effing do. And I said, well, God claims to be the source of love, joy and peace. Maybe one of the reasons you're not experiencing like you wanted is because like the heater, you're away from where the warmth is found. You're yeah. away from where the love is found. They got it and I left it at that. But that's the quest, isn't it, Rob? The quest is to, for us as Christians, the quest really is to represent Christ in such a way that people are drawn to him. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately for some, you know, we're, we're the fragrance of life and for others we're the stench of death, um, which, which I guess means they, they're not in the place to receive that. No. Yes. You know, when you talk about heaters, it reminds me of an incident from Bible college. And uh, it was actually the, it was the last um, big meeting at the, at the end of the year. And uh, it was a cold day and we had the heaters on. And, and, and at the college, the, the, the main prayer room or the chapel, there was a fan heater on this side and there was a fan heater on this side. And that was it. You know, I don't know what it is nowadays, probably air pumps. Um, and there was maybe 100 people in the room. There were two students right up against each of the two heaters, right? They were nice and toasty, mm. and the rest of us were freezing. And and I'm going, I walked over and I said, do you want to move away from the heater? Because A, uh, you're too close, you're getting too warm, but nobody else is getting any of that warmth. Mm. And, you know, if we put it in the context of, of our damaged psyches or, or whatever, as Christians, sometimes we're hogging the heater, you know, because we don't feel warm enough yet. Where God is saying, "Actually, you are warm enough. Let some of that warmth out through you. Let some of my love out through you to the others around you. You don't have to be hot. You know, there's no there's no level goes. Okay, you're ninety three point two degrees now. You can go. You're now warm enough. Let some of that warmth." Mm. of my love shine through you to others who aren't as warm as you. One of um, there's, there's a book I read a little while ago. It was, the book's called Hole in the Gospel. I can't remember the author's name, but he was the national, uh, international president of World Vision. Okay. Um, and one of the lines that I really appreciated out of that book, he said, he said, if you want to meet God, go feed the poor. And what he meant by that was that when we find ourselves in a place beyond ourself, that's where God is. When we find ourselves at the end of our own ability, that's where God is. Mm. And, uh, you know, many of us, unfortunately, um, you know, <laughs> here's the thing, Rob. God is triune God, but our Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We are triune beings as well spirit, soul, body. Yep. When we are born again, using that, that biblical term, which is, uh, can be used as a whip word, unfortunately, but in the, in the right con concept and context, the born again is, is a beautiful thing. Because before I was a Christian, so I got saved when I was 27, before then I wasn't born again. So I had no understanding of spiritual things because yep. My spirit was not alive to God, his spirit. Yes. It wasn't alive. Yeah. It was disconnected. And that's the where... The door was closed the, to the heater. That's right. The door was closed to the heater. And that's where God says, if you eat from this tree, you'll surely die. Well, Adam and Eve didn't physically die, but they did die spiritually. They were disconnected. Yep. That's why Adam hid. That's why he was afraid. That's why guilt. That's why shame. That's why all that sort of stuff, because they then became disconnected yep. from the source of life. When my spirit is born again, I'm now in communion 
to some degree, varying degrees, with God by his Holy Spirit. That communion then infiltrates to my soul. So my spirit informs my soul that then guides my body. Yeah. So there's a process. My spirit is alive, connected to the Holy Spirit. So the source of life, I, I've now got, I, I, I now have access to the source of life, which then from the spirit um, informs my soul. So my soul, see a soul without a spirit says, I will, I want, yeah. it's all about me. And unfortunately, our society, secular society, because they're not connected, so I really feel for them, and I mean that sincerely, they're not connected to the source of life, so all they have is their soul. And their soul, their mind, their will and their emotions, yeah. that can become a very oppressive master very, very quickly. When, when you say informs, you're not, you're not just saying tells, it's more like instructs. Instructs, yeah, it's, 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 it's like a father having a relationship with a son. With their child, yeah. it's that it's that communion, where where you're getting. I was going to use the word download, but it's possibly a little bit too clinical. But you you're getting the inside info that if you didn't have that, then all I've got is my soul, yeah. and that's all I used to have. And I know that that my soul took me to some pretty wrong places, disappointing places. <laughs> really took me to some of those yeah. those places where. Where, where part of me was saying, "Flip it! This is all life's about. It's a bit. It's not all that good. It's not all that. It's 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 not all that rewarding because yeah. the moment that's over, I I want more, or I feel, I feel empty still. And so our spirit then informs our soul that then instructs our body. And without that, all we have is our soul and our body. And because that's that's the realm we live in, in 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 our society in a general sense without Christ. And so it's no wonder people are um, chasing materialism, wanting to look good and all those things because they don't have anything else to, yeah. to, to, to no one else to guide them. That's all they have. Yeah. And that then runs rampant. In, in our being, because I promise you this, if, if, if I am left to my own desires, it ain't going to be pretty, Rob. There's, when we're talking about damaged humans, those other chapters in the Bible that aren't the first two or the last two, the, the when we become born again, so the spirit's going to inform the soul or tell the soul, yeah. or, or you know, there are some souls that will receive that quicker. And we see that in people, that, that immediately there's this healing. There are others, though, where it takes a long time. And, oh, absolutely. And I'm reminded of the verse that says, uh, depending on the translation, you know, be, be ye not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm. Um, and sometimes that renewing takes a lot longer and it's easy for us to give up the process. There's somebody who, um, who I was talking to recently and I said, look, I said, take this scripture, and I use Derek Prince as the example for this because he did this. He had a, I don't know if you know, he had a skin disease in uh, World War II. Right. Uh, he was in North Africa, and the doctors couldn't do it. And he came across the verse in Proverbs that says, I will be healing to your skin. And God says, I want you to read that out loud, to quote that verse out loud, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm. When you say thank you, God, for the food, Quote this verse. Mm. This is your medicine. And I said to this person, I said, here, this, these couple of verses from Psalms, these are your medicine because what we need to do is reprogram your soul with, with God's word through your spirit Yeah. so that your soul goes, oh, I finally get it. But it's, for some people, that doesn't happen overnight. Well, it's, it's, it's the quest of our life, isn't it? I, I, I like the word pilgrim. Um, that's misunderstood as well, I think. But we're, we, we're, the, the goal is we're, we're a pilgrim on a journey to improve ourselves here. Ultimate, the, the ultimate goal is heaven, but like you said right at the beginning, we're not there no. and we're not meant to be there. We're meant to be here. So the goal is, okay, let's make the most of what here is. And so it's all about, it's all about working through the things that cause me to stumble and... Repla trace, face, replace, yeah. finding those lies. I don't know if I've told this story. I had a guy that came to me um, a little while ago. I'm going to be vague. 
He came to me a little while ago because he had a, I think I did tell you this, a, a, a sexual fetish. And um, and he sought some prayer for this this fetish. Married with children, lovely Christian guy, hated what he hated the yep. fetish. And in, and and he was so sincere in wanting to deal with this. And so I'll make this a shorter story. He he told me the fetish, and I um, I actually sp- explained to him how that fetish came about because he told me his backstory, and he realised that 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 it wasn't because he was a disgusting person, it's because he was a broken person. Yep. So we're broken people. We're not disgusting people. We're creating the image of God. This is all humanity. This is whether you know Christ or not. You're still creating mm. his image, and the goal is to, is to rediscover what that looks like and the freedom and the joy and the peace and the, um, and the purpose in our life that comes from being connected to the source of life again. Yep. And so he recognised that he's not disgusting because he thought he was, and that was his barrier. That was like a wedge that kept him from God in a deeper way, yep. and and he hated himself. Because if you feel that way, you're not going to step out from behind into the light because then God's going to see this disgusting Absolutely right, Rob. Well said. And so when he recognised, oh, I'm not disgusting, I'm just broken, and broken just means I need healing. And so we we talked about what healing can look like. And and in my office, he understood that and took hold of that. And and tears flowed because because the power of what he thought was disgusting rather yeah. than just uh, broken, the power of that was was now broken over him and he realized that oh that beautiful relationship with the father that loves me so much that he would he would set me free from that is available to him and so he stepped into that availability yep. and um and he wasn't a very tall man but when he hopped up and walked out of my office he was a much taller yep. man and and I and I personally like that story because we all have things about ourselves that we think are yuck or disgusting, and so we can't bring it into the light. Yeah. Whereas, no, the better way to look at it is we're just broken. We're yes, we're sinners, but sin is just anything God doesn't agree with, and He longs for us to. You, you know, what's where, where's that verse again? Um, in the Bible, <laughs> what was the line you told me I should use? When I forget where the I scriptures forget. say. Oh, the scriptures say yeah. that um, all have sinned and fallen short. So, so sin is missing the mark, yeah. and so we 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 miss the mark. And so the goal is to hit the target because our heavenly Father wants us to hit the target because it's good for us because we're now becoming successful. Um, and it's good for those around us because it's um, it's a good example. But if we see God, this is my personal view, if we see God as this big old fella sitting on a big throne pointing his, his profoundly powerful finger at me and making me feel so small and so useless and so worthless, I think that's the wrong view. Yeah. For me, it's a view of a loving father that so longs to see his kid free of whatever it is that's keeping him tripped up and tied up because the father wants that child to truly just be free to be who they were always meant to be. From a gospel perspective, when, when that verse, we've all fallen short of God's mark, is, I mean, I've just done a sermon on uh, Romans 3 where it talks about the, the, you know, the law and the purpose of the law. The whole reason for that is like you're not the only one, Alan. Everybody mm. in the world has fallen short of the mark. There's mm. not a human being apart from Jesus who has been born who hasn't fallen short. of. That's the whole point of the cross. That's the whole point yeah. of me sending my son Jesus to die for you is because none of you could ever make the mark. It doesn't matter how perfect you are, whether you're Billy Graham or, or, or whatever. You could never, ever reach the mark. That's why I sent Jesus. And to me, I think that's a, that's a healing thing. Uh, we were talking before about um, Peter Poser, the New Zealand guitarist, and uh, Peter was a perfectionist. Mm. He went into mental depression. He actually paid for his own, uh, you know, the Zap treatment mm. um, t- to help him because he could never, ever be good enough yeah. 
for what he thought he had to be. And a few years before he died, and I say this in one of my videos, um, a few years before he died, he had a stroke. He couldn't use his left arm at all. And he said to me, he says, this is the best thing God ever did for me. He says, I'm no longer tempted to be perfect because mm. I can't even play mm. it. Um, and, and God is saying to us, he says, none of you could ever be perfect. Mm. You're all broken. You all got something wrong with you. Let me, you know, come, come to me, let me deal with it. And one day when I take you from this world, yes, you will be perfect. But let's work towards that now. We can deal with the problems now. Yeah, I think the, the view is a loving Heavenly Father walking with his kids and encouraging them just to, to keep on going. You know, I believe in you. Yes, you've stuffed up, maybe even for the 10th time or whatever, but let's have another go. I'm still here for yep. you. Hold my hand. I think I said to you that um, when I stuff up, the goal is not to do that very often, but it still happens from time <laughs> to time. And when I stuff up, I ask myself three questions. And they're always the same questions and they're always in the same order. The first question is very, very worldly. And it's, um, is this going to cost me very much? <laughs> For, you know, financially. Yep. Oh, stink. The second question is a little better, but not an awful lot. And, and that is, do I need to go and apologise to somebody? And the third question, like I say, it's always the same. It's always the last question is, God, are you still here with me? And I genuinely mean this when I've asked that question like I say this hasn't happened lots of times so I'm grateful for that yeah. but boy it has happened and it will happen again I hear God say to me yeah I'm here with you Alan let's go put this right together he's not pointing a bony finger at me and telling me I'm, di I'm disgusted in you Alan you yep. should know better by now he's saying let's go put this right together you know you got, you got stuff to learn yeah. and that's okay you know have you seen the, the uh, TV series The Chosen? Mm, I have. Have you seen the episode where Mary comes back? Yeah. And I, I don't I don't want to spoil it. If you, you know, if you haven't seen it, turn off now. But there's the point where, where Mary, uh, she she backslides in a, in a major way, you know. Um, and she comes back and Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there. And Mary Magdalene says, should I go and see him? And, and the mother of Jesus goes, yes, go now. You know, you, you've confessed, you know, even though she had to have the other two disciples bring her back, she's confessed, yes, I messed up. And what's the answer to that? Go and see Jesus now. Yeah. Yeah. right? And he doesn't condemn her. He, you know, They both admit, yes, you screwed up. Yes, you did something wrong. Mm. I'm not here to slam you for doing something wrong. I'm here to bring you back into relationship yeah. now that you've admitted it. Yeah. Luke 15, isn't it? The prodigal son. Yeah. Beautiful story. One of the greatest parables ever spoken. And Jesus told it as a parable. It didn't literally happen. He told it as a story to help get the point across. Yeah. And so if anybody... But how do we, I mean, this is the thing. I mean, do, how do we do that? If, if you and I can sit here quite happily knowing that we're slightly broken, but not possibly as broken as others in our own minds and sort of things, but there's people that are watching or listening that are going, well, I'm feeling an awful lot broken, more broken than what I'm hearing Rob and Alan sound like. What do I do? Recognise you're broken, and if you're broken, that means there's healing to be found. So it's available to us. Um, gee, I hope I don't come across as someone that's, <laughs> that's you no, know, no. A high... high <laughs> Flip, talk to my family. They'll tell you. I said, I said, to, I said to my son the other day, I said, when I and I don't mean this is a, a terrible sin thing or anything yeah. like that, but I've got some quirks about me that 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 I'm hoping are okay. But Ginny will shake her head from time to time. He's like, well, I'm not so sure. So I said to my son, I said, when I do this, what do you think? And he just said, he said, well, that's dad being dad. Yeah. I thought, well, that's a relief rather than him saying something like, yeah, you could improve on their dad. It's just yeah. dad being dad. So so the goal for us all is to be the best me I can be. That's the goal. Just be the best Alan I can be. I'm not I'm not called to try and be Rob. Yep. I'm called to try and be Alan. And whatever's getting in the way of that. See God when if God didn't want me, I wouldn't exist. I really actually believe that's true. The only reason I exist because God wants me here. That's I knitted the message you together Bible, in your mother's yeah. womb. Psalm 139. You know, Psalm 139. And so, so the, the reality of that helps me recognize, okay, I'm meant to be Alan, but I'm meant to be 
um, a an Allen that represents well God. Mm-hmm. I'm meant to be an Allen that's free from from um, the quest is to is to find healing from my broken stuff, yep. and I'm a little down the track of that. So so hopefully hopefully there's some improvement compared to what I was because yep. that's the goal. But that that doesn't. We all still struggle. You know, will you trust me today? Is the question God asks me every day. Do you believe me? That's, well, the, that's the question. It's, and it's that's big, the trust, you know, isn't it? That's the trust. trust. Do you believe what I have said? In the Bible, yeah. Do you believe that? And I mean, the two sides of it. If you haven't read it, you can't believe it because you don't know it. But having read it, do you believe it? Do you believe that God is the heavenly Father mm. who loves you? He's not just the, yes, He's the heavenly Judge. He's the God of all things. He must be, mm. yeah. You know? But His, you know, that's that's as Winky Prateney says in his book, the nature and character of God. He says the nature of God is that holiness, the holy, holy, holy. He is the judge of all the universe. You know, Abraham shall not the judge of all the universe be right. But His character is love, mm. and that's what He wants to show us. So we have to recognize and say, Do I believe His words in the Bible? Mm. And to me, that's the, the it's. And again, it's the reprogramming. Mm. To, to to reprogram uh, my spirit, and if you haven't come to know the Lord, uh, and let me speak directly uh, to you, if you don't know Jesus, that's the first step in uh, in being healed from the brokenness. You you need to come to Him, recognize that you are a sinner, recognize that you could never ever be good enough for Him on your own, and let Him deal with that through the blood of Jesus on the cross. Mm. But having done that to reprogram our spirit by feeding it with God's word to the point where, ah, I do believe it. It's just like the, the little engine. I think I can. I think I can. I know I can. Mm. Just keep going over and over. Yeah, you know that Romans 12 that you talk about, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be uh, transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's, that is the quest. Mm. That is what we're about, is to, to to find out what am I thinking about me that God doesn't agree with. If, if I believe something about me that God doesn't agree with, then one of us is wrong, and it won't be God, it will be Alan. And so the quest then is to begin to, 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 to work on being free from what I believe and owning what God believes, because, you know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So he's, he's the whole package. Yeah. And the word repentance, I think we've talked about that, the word repentance literally means to change your mind. And so the goal is to change, have our mind changed, because repentance isn't just turning to go another direction, because I can turn to go another direction, but if I haven't owned the direction I'm going, like 100%, wow, thank you, what a wonderful way. That was darkness, now I'm in light. If I haven't done that, I'm going to find myself being distracted to back to that. Yeah. So when we change our mind, when we own, you know, my view of Jesus is he has holes in his hands. Why, why, why has he got holes in his hands? What was the purpose behind that? Well, the purpose was for me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when, it, when, when he cried out on the cross, it is finished. What did he mean by that? Well, he had done what he was called to do. He's now made the way. You know, listen, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens yeah. the door, I'll come in. And, anyone. Uh, if anyone. Yeah. We're all of us. It's available to, to all humanity. It's the beautiful thing. And when we can express that in ways that uh, engage well, with where a person is at and take take help help them from where they're at because when I got saved the guy reached me where I was at if he had gone if he had if he had done a holier than thou kind of thing and quoted some verses of scripture and told me I was a sinner going to hell which I expected that he would do but he didn't he just reached me where I was at in a way that I could relate to and then I opened myself up to hear from him more, and 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 he he was um, he was sensitive to me and sensitive to God, and he did that well. I'm very grateful mm. to him for that. But that's what it's about for us all, I think, Rob. It's about us. It's an honest and journey. It's an honest journey with those that are that, that are in our circle of influence. Yeah, and just to. to 
finish with because a great place to finish but just because i'm a follower of jesus doesn't mean i'm now perfect i'm still on the journey i'm still broken and there are different levels yeah. of brokenness amongst believers yeah that's right we're forgiven what's what's the line um it's a t-shirt slogan isn't it uh, forgiven not perfect or yeah, something christians like. aren't perfect just, yeah, forgiven. just forgiven yeah and and the goal there is to is to represent Christ well enough for people to want what we have. Yes. So that's not licensed to to do dumb stuff. Yeah. Good place to stop, Alan. I look forward to next time. Me too, Rob. Thanks. And if this is the first of the Living Well podcasts that you've come across, uh, check out some of the other ones. You can uh, click subscribe or click the bell or like or whichever it is that you're on. And we'll see you next time. God bless.